Keep, keep it pyro. We got Young Yeezy inside the Pyro Radio Studio, bro. Thanks for coming down, man. Love for having me, man. We're inside. I think like you're the youngest guest we've ever had in the studio, man. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah, man. We've had a lot of guests over the past year. Like this is our first show since the anniversary. Your second show since the anniversary of Pyro's relaunch. Well, it's good to have you down, man. Oh, Respect. Love for having me, man. Yeah, man. I know you came a long way, man. Well, a little little distance, isn't it, from bit, yeah, southeast? Yeah, yeah. yeah, southeast, man. Whereabouts there, man? Whereabouts? Southeast, Lewisham, Broccoli. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sick, man. There's a lot of grime talent from there, man. There's a lot of grime talent from there. I see it as like one of the second homes of grime music, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Definitely. It's coming through, man. It's yeah, coming. man. Definitely. I mean, you've got Bowie free, but I think I think Lewisham has definitely had maybe more artists than, than, than Bo anyway, man. So it's good to have you down here, man. Good to hear your music. I see that in your short career so far. Like, you've already put out quite a lot. And you've got a lot of coverage, man. I see you've been like... You've been co-signed by the likes of Phil Taggart, DJ Semtex on Nation of Billions. Um, even The Guardian gave you a little mention, man. I saw they said yeah. um, they said they make Stormzy look yawnsy. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. Yeah, man, I, that's, that's dope, man. How they're putting Stormzy down in credit of you, man. I think that in itself is, is, is something to be proud of, man. Even if you quit tomorrow, man, that's, that's, a, good, that's, a, good, that's a good credibility right there, man. But Definitely. obviously... The biggest news that you've got as well is that you're going to be playing two stages at Glastonbury Festival this year, man. Yep, that's right. I'll be playing two stages at Glastonbury this year. It's going to be a mad thing. You get me? Due to right, that's massive, man. So, just for anyone that is not aware of your background as an artist, about you as an artist, give us a little introduction about how you came into the game and how long you've been spitting and that kind of thing. All right. Well, I'm young, Yizzy. I'm 17 from South East London, Lewis and Brooklyn. Uh, I started in school, pirate radio, anything, open mic, anything and everything I could get to. Uh, I've been doing this since January 2016. Um, and in the short time, I've managed to work with some amazing people, uh, make some moves and, and like, start to plant myself in the grime scene. So, yeah, I just I love for every opportunity, love for having me today. And yeah, man, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. I mean, when you say you work with some amazing people, is that on? Is that in terms of producers that you worked with, or MCs, or everything from DJs to bloggers to MCs, yeah. producers, cameramen, uh, uh, everything. Yeah, like, I've met some amazing people, some proper genuine people from up and down all over the UK in it that I wouldn't have necessarily met otherwise. Because being from South, most people know if you're from South, you don't really leave south okay so it's good to kind of see the rest of the world and, and what everyone else is doing and it's great to link up with all these people because you get me new ideas you come together you make something amazing and then boom history the rest is history isn't it 100 percent, man you seem like a very mature artist for someone of your years man i gotta say that like you seem like you've got a lot of wisdom you know your direction you know how to carry yourself man i think it seems like you fast tracked your career is that is that because were you brought in the game by anyone or is it straight just being grinding hustling being picked up by the right management and not not being a dickhead basically um i never got brought in by no one yeah you get me i i went started off at a youth club studio where you had to get down there early if everyone was there before you you weren't spitting that day because right. they were only there for a certain amount of time you know, i started off at recording at the youth club all i had was bars get me spitting in school uh watching old radio sets old eskimo dances everything studying um uh, every single opportunity whether that's an open mic whether that's a li little show in front of 10 people whatever it is every single opportunity i was there i was doing something almost every day while at the same time trying to do my gcse's you get me i was there still every single day doing something like there was no stopping there was no resting there was no break every day even now i'm still out doing something every single day to to further my career um it might be fast track in the sense that i've done a lot in a short amount of time but it's because i've literally done a lot every all, all the time just i don't stop working i sometimes that's kind of a bad thing for me because it's hard to take in what's happening right now like all the benefits and all the good things i'm always thinking right what can i do next what else can i do you get me that's I, my work rate can only be more and more and more. I don't ever want it to decrease or go down. You know? Right, right. I guess you don't need to stop and watch what's happening because you're kind of in it. You're you're in the center of things happening now. So, well, at least you're trying to get to obviously 
the things about music is that you never stop. You're never like, right, that's it. I've, I've reached my thing. Unless yeah. you're like Jay Z or Diddy or you say Wiley on the UK side of things. Mm. I guess even Skepta is still trying to reach his next level as well, man. So yep. Yep. in terms of like you growing up as an artist, what which kind of artists did you take inspiration from, both in terms of music and their approach to the game, in terms of how they how they approach the music industry? Wiley, Dizzy Rascal. Skepta, Gets, Devlin, Criminal, Little Nasty, uh, and Chipmunk. Yeah, definitely those ones. Um, for e- each for different reasons in their own respect. Like, I like that Wiley was trying to kind of bring through everyone, and to an extent, I'm trying. Even now, I'm I'm not even in a position to do that, but I'm still trying to like bring people from my ends in that get me don't have a platform because most people I was lucky enough that I worked and worked and kind of built a platform myself to, to do my stuff from so and a lot of people from ends and from Lewisham don't necessarily have that platform or know the right people so that's what I'm trying to do long term and short term and then like Lil Nasty Criminal gets Devil and all of them from back in F Radio days yeah, yeah, yeah. the hunger the passion the energy like uh, that's that's a lot that's where a lot of my passion comes from you get me I won't lose that hunger um, but yeah each of them in their own own rights right. yeah, yeah yeah they've each done their own thing man definitely I, I know what you mean because I think Grimmel and Little Nasty don't get as much recognition as I think they deserve man mm. they're very strong MCs man definitely and I think they never they, they had their times and that and Grimmel definitely crossed over I, I remember him did it, he did a track with Cheryl Cole yeah, yeah a few years back man I know he did a remix of one of her tracks and that was that was quite an unexpected one but you know you got to do that, man. You got to do those crossover tracks. Is that is that something that you'd like to do one day to do like crossover tracks with non grime artists? Is that is it, or do you want to kind of keep it one hundred percent grime, like the likes of you know JME? He's, he's never really stepped outside mm. of that grime. No, world. a lot of what I do with grime is I'll mix the sound. Maybe like I've I've got tunes that are like grime, but like got a reggae guy on a chorus, mm. and then I've done like drill, but with grime. I, like, I always messing around and experimenting with the sound, like. If I like it, I'll do it, but I'll always find a way to keep it grimy. Bring it back to grime, but yeah. cross over into other surrounding genres in a sense. Yeah. That's good, man. I like I'll that I'll always approach. find a way, yeah. whether that's a breakdown, whether that's a chorus, a verse, and in a verse, it breaks down into some mad thing on the beat and it starts getting really grimy, okay. some sub bass, whatever it is, I'll find a way to bring it back to the grimy side, definitely, because that's what I do at the end of the day, man's, man's grime. That's it, keeping it grime, man, keeping it 100. Um, another, I mean, maybe the biggest artist at the minute uh, out of Lewisham, out of Broccoli, is um, obviously a uh, novelist, man. Yeah. Is that somebody who kind of you've looked up to in terms of um, his approach to the game is what you're trying to replicate or are you mates or what's your connection with him if you have any? Yeah, yeah, me and novelist, man, we're brothers. I've known him for a good while. He's he's helped me out in a couple of things where I've I've been kind of in a bad place with music mm. not not kind of wanting to like continue or whatever the situation he, he's helped me and kept me out there. he's a very spiritual guy mm-hmm. and very blessed one of the most blessed people i know um but in, in his take to the game his take to the game is quite different from what i'm trying to do um his the way he's done it is just so unique and different like uh-huh. it's, it's completely different like um but that tight time track that he bust out with um, yeah. with Mum Dance, I think that was so sick because it was very minimal. It was a very minimal grime track, and as mm. we know, grime is not specific a very minimal genre. Yeah. So I think that definitely ties in with what you're saying, man. Straight away, like you know, for a guy to come in the game, when was that? 2012, 2013, around 2013. That take time track came I through. So, yeah. And I think that's what made people's eyebrows raise a lot because he worked with Mum Dance, who's obviously a very dope producer. Yeah. And he came out of something different. I think that's what's needed, isn't it? To come out of something that people ain't heard before, something that people ain't expecting. Um, but at the minute, you're promoting your EP, This Is Life. Yep, that's This Is Life EP. When did that drop, man? When did that drop? That dropped on the 7th of April. Yeah. This year? Yeah. So not even long ago, yeah. Yeah, well, not even that long ago. It's been yeah, yeah, yeah. almost a month now. Yeah, um, yeah five tracks on there. Two, two collabs, one with Specialist Moss and another one with my brother Tux. Um, yeah, we, we did a madness. A lot of, some of them were quite quick to do the song. Some of them took longer, but it all came together nicely in the end and it, it wrapped up into like a really 
a really nice project. Yeah, man, it's a five track project. What made you want, what made you not want to go to like eight or nine tracks to turn it into a whole like album or mixtape project? What was the, um, was there a specific thought process behind making it five or is it just you had five tracks that you were happy to put out or what was the? Nah, these tracks were made as, except for LDN, which was already out before, those tracks were made for the EP. Okay. Um, I didn't want to do more and turn it into a mixtape because I'm already doing that at the end of this year, but not like a normal mixtape. It's something ridiculous. It's like, like a street album type thing. Yeah. It's like, I can't say too much, but it's like, it's an old school grime mixtape. Like, I want it to go down in history. So that's why I didn't want to make it a mixtape. And then to make it into an album, mm. I realized that an album is very personal, especially your first album. It needs to be something, it's like a journey and I'm st- I've only been in this music thing for such a short time I'm, I'm, I'm learning things every day and it wouldn't kind of be fair of me or I wouldn't be fair on myself to go, you know, I want to do an album because I know I'm not ready to do an album yet. That makes sense, man. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. That, that's what they say about the album. The debut album is like the, 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 the record that took your whole life to create. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's like... If you look back at the debut albums over the years, man, you know, obviously you've got some of the, the greatest ones. So I see what you're saying. You're kind of holding back until you're fully mentally ready. You've got the content, yeah. you've got the connections, you've got the beats, you've got the concepts for the track. So for, I want to play a track from This Is Life, but I want to leave it up to you to decide which one because, you know, it's your project. And we played This Is Life, the lead single. Yep. Which one do you want to play next out of that project, man? Uh, I'd like to play Science featuring Specialist more. Keep it pyro. So that track right there, uh, tell me a little bit about the feature artist on there, man. He's got a very distinctive style by the name of Specialist Moss, right? Yeah, that's right. Specialist Moss, uh, he's very much on a whole new type of vibe. He does grime, he does ragga type tunes, obviously he does reggae, um, done previous collaborations with Heartless Crew. Like he's been around for a long time, so and I was lucky enough to link up with him. We're tight now. We've got more tunes coming as well, and yeah, we're in studio. It's about eleven, half eleven. Played the beat, vibes, and by two o'clock in the morning, the tune was done. Chase, yeah, it was, man. It was an accidental yeah. kind of banger, but that's one of my favourite tunes off, off of the EP because it's just there's nothing like it. Right, right. No, it is sick and it's a great one to open the project up as well, man. It gives, definitely gives you, shows a lot of different sides to your sound that you're not just straight grime. You've got different influences on there as well. Mm. I mean, with the reggae influences or that, he's he's singing like quite a famous track, original track from like yeah. the 70s, isn't it? Reggae track from the 70s. Um, is, is reggae music being something that has influenced your sound like via your family or via your own kind of interest yourself? Um, to an extent, yeah. Like my dad was a reggae artist. So he, he did quite a few bits there. Uh, it's always been in the house. Like my mum listens to it, obviously coming from a Caribbean background, like a lot of aunties and uncles and that reggae has always been the kind of the music. But um, I didn't know I wanted to do a tune like that. But when I linked up with him mm. and he just started vibes into it, it, it all just clicked in my head. And then I was like, boom, let's do this, this, this. And he was like, yeah, that sounds calm. Let's do this as well. I was like, yeah. And then it all just came together. It was really by accident. We were just flicking through the beats and he was like, no, stop, go back to that one. Hmm. It was accidental. Who produced that one? Uh, that's produced by Gamer. Gamer, West, yeah, yeah, yeah. West London producer, yeah. Dope. Hard producer, one of my favourite producers. Uh, yeah, it was madness. Yeah, man, he came on my radio show on a different radio station back in 2009, actually, bro. Yeah, uh, back then, man. Yeah, it was... It was uh, Long time ago, man. But yeah, big up gamer, man. I know him through the Every whole time. Samurai Collective as well, right? Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, man. That's sick. That's sick. That's sick. Um, so, in your view, what what separates an artist who's going to be here for the short term from an artist who's going to be here for the long term? And it might sound like quite a simplistic question, but there's a lot of artists that come through and have a huge buzz, yeah. And then six months later, or you know, nine months, ten months down the line, like you don't hear anything from them. And I've always wondered why that is with some artists. Whereas other ones, they come in a bit slower, yeah. Like they 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 don't have a huge single at the beginning, but they do a gradual build up. And I'm sure we can all think of both types of artists in our yep. own head. Yep. Um, that do one type or the other. What do you yep. think it is that determines whether? they're going to be here for a long time or whether they're going to be a fly-by-night kind of overnight I, artist? I think a lot of what I've seen is I, I've seen a lot of people that make one-hit wonder songs mm. and from when you've been labelled a one-hit wonder it's very hard not to lose that title 
Um, you can kind of tell who's going to be here for the long haul if you can look at, say, their past three, four tunes. Has there been an increase in the levels every time? Has it just been up and up and up? And if the answer is yes, then chances are that's going to continue. Because most people that do songs and the, the, the last song they've done was better than the one before, mm-hmm. it shows they're sitting down, they're recognising, and then they're moving forward. And they want to be seen as moving forward. To do a one-hit wonder or a one-banger and, and you blow off that banger, you're so far up up at the top now with that tune, you then have to go even further than that. And most artists don't do that. And from when the f- people will look to see, right, he's done this banger now, is the next one going to be a banger? If the answer to that is anything but yes, <laughs> then you've got a problem because that's all people are looking out for for you. If that track goes down, half of your fan base or whatever it is are, are done with you now and we'll just rinse that other tune because it's like you haven't delivered and everyone wants you to deliver as, as harsh as that sounds that's the way the game goes people want you to deliver if you don't deliver people lose interest people got short attention spans that's that's what it is so you've got to be shown as doing a gradual build up um, you can't ever be seen to go backwards or if you do go backwards for one song or whatever project it is then on the next one you've got to come twice three times right as right 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 so you can't yeah okay that's it that again showing your maturity and wisdom there man i think a lot of artists double your age don't even realize that man so i think that's good to see that you've kind of clocked that aspect of the game um just wondering man you said your, your dad is a reggae artist was he someone that was well known was he like a, a uh, known artist or more someone that wasn't nah not not really wide known more local but um he was lucky enough Obviously, being from Jamaica, he was lucky enough to do a couple of jamming sessions with Bob Marley oh, back wow. when, when he was still alive. And I've got a couple of those pictures at home somewhere. So that was that was kind of his kind of vibe. He was very much a reggae, but also root singer. Okay, that was more of his vibe. So not someone who's widely known, but um, he started doing his music in Brixton, so he's known a lot in Brixton. Okay, was he part of any sound system or anything? Not, no. not to my knowledge. No, no, no. He What's went, his name? He went by the name of the Almighty Dread. Okay. Um, and got That's a couple a albums, name. couple vinyls, and yeah, he's just been doing his thing. And now he's just doing like shows out in Spain. They, they love all the reggae and the roots music yeah. in Spain. So yeah. he's just he's doing that scene out there now. So he's still active. That's good. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very much active. Well, ever see a collaboration between you two one day? No. <laughs> <laughs> one day, bro. One day, one day, one day. Um, maybe, maybe not. You know, you never know, man. You never know. The future is not. Yeah, it's in the um, family, though. Yeah, it's, yeah. You can tell the. the, the mm. Yeah, I've got a sister that does music as well out in Canada. She does um, a lot of acoustic stuff, a lot of type of indie songs. So she's doing a lot of that out here, racking up the Spotify the views on YouTube. She's doing amazing. Like she taught me how to play guitar. She taught me how to sing way back when. Like. So it's, it's always been in the family that like i got brothers as well that are doing like the drill type of stuff and, and, and grime as well to an extent. So like it's definitely in the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Heavy, heavy, heavy. Um, which, al- did, were you an album person growing up? Did you listen to albums over and over and over again? Like which albums were you kind of, were your monumental albums that you listened to growing up that stuck with you? You mentioned the artist that, yeah. that came through. Like obviously you got Griminal, not just bars. That was his big mixtape that he had. Yeah. And in terms of any any specific mixtape projects or album projects, which ones really stuck with you and made you realise that you wanted to be an MC? Oh, because that's two <laughs> kind of questions there in it. I've, yeah. I've thrown in a little another question there. So the first one was really which album stuck with you growing up, and the second question would be which album or projects or songs made you realise that you wanted to be an MC, man. Okay, right. If we go with growing up. I would definitely say I am Chipmunk. Heavy? Yeah. Uh Hard Bodied. I know that's I know obviously that's not as much grime that like, come from gigs, but that was that everybody knows. That's that's a legendary right there. Like that it is what it is. So yeah, I am Chipmunk, Hard Bodied. Um That's for like projects of work. Um, Tales of the Crypt. Ooh, the not, debut, the debut. Not, wow. but no, I didn't. I didn't mess with that loads to per se. At the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. Yeah. I wasn't in a right. I was too young to kind of understand it all. Like Devlin is a very Mate, I complex was, artist, brother. When I first heard that man, it blew my mind away. And I think I was even. I was only like 21, 22 when I heard that. Mm. 
and I, and now I realize how epic it is. But even he was younger than me, so yeah, yeah definitely yeah. Devlin is an iconic artist, and I see why Wiley gives him so much love, man. Because definitely, like right. Wiley, Wiley is one of Devlin's biggest fans, man. Mm. Understandably, yeah, definitely, yeah. So I'd say those, but kind of growing up, it was more individual songs, if anything, rather than projects mm. of work, because like you would the, the the gram tunes way back when the ones that got played most were rather than projects of work it was more a singles songs. market yeah 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 yeah, yeah 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 like obviously there was the the, the 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 timeless ones like um boy in the corner but you would not everyone kind of knew all the songs or not right. all the songs would getting pushed as much there'd be like certain ones from each yeah, project would yeah. get pushed and then those are the ones you'd know the yeah, yeah. the artists for um so yeah it was it was kind of a varied and then i'd say that wanted to make me be an mc but because it's only been like a year it's like it would probably be more recent projects so I, i'll say um ghetto gospel oh definitely one of my favorite albums man definitely love that one um uh it's it's hard it's hard it's hard it's hard do you know what is the yeah. thing that made me want to be an mc if i'm honest was the radio sets it wasn't okay. a, it wasn't actually songs it was watching radio sets mm-hmm. from gram show to f radio to the heat fm like uh deja like all the all the old kind of pirate radio things is what made me want to be an artist more than kind of bodies of work but i, I definitely mess with get a gospel a lot that was a mm, timeless man Definitely, man. Yeah. Did you go? Did you see the live performance of it? Because he, he, I think he performed the whole thing. It was at end of January, February. I didn't get to see yeah, that. No, 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 no. I was out the country, man. I would have loved to have seen that, man. Because yeah, that, I think that's his best project, personally. I mean, I'm a big Ghetto fan, but that yeah, is he's, um, he's that. Yeah, it's hard to put one, obviously, but I think that one right there, mm. that was because it was a good mix of the hip hop lyricism and then the grime gulliness, you know. So yeah, but anyway. I I don't think that's what he regarded if I remember reading I don't think that's what he said was his best one uh, I can't remember what it was it was one of the other ones he said is what he thought was his best piece of work or, or, or something like that where one of them was a studio album or it was it, it was actually his second studio album rather than his first and he thought the first one was the best or something like that because he's done loads of different projects yeah. but I, I remember he said Ghetto Gospel was the one that meant the most to him but he didn't think it was his best I think it was one of the other ones. I can't think off the top of my head, but I remember, I definitely remember seeing that. Yeah. Keep, keep, keep it pyro.